Hi guys, Miss Jackson here. I am so excited to read you this book today. Ooh, I've been I've been waiting to read this book to you. It was up in my daughter's bedroom and I had to ask her to climb up her ladder and get it for me. When I was a little girl, it was one of my top favorite storybooks. And I know I already said that about The Little House, which was indeed my very first favorite, but this was a close second. And I would ask my big sisters to read it to me over and over and over again. And then guess what happened? I had little kids and my little kids loved it. And they would ask their daddy to read it to them every single night. So when I would cook supper, I would hear Joe in there reading this book to my little kids. So it's a special one. I am a little bit embarrassed to show it to you because it was much loved and it's as old as Miss Jackson. But anyway, it is Gus Was a Friendly Ghost by Jane Thayer and it's illustrated by Seymour Fleshman. And it's interesting because I always called it Gus the Friendly Ghost and so did my kids, but it's Gus Was a Friendly Ghost. Wow, the things you notice. There is the opening page. See the house with the moon? Is it a little bit spooky? Because it's about a ghost, is it a little spooky? I don't think so, but we'll see. Because he's friendly. Oh, I have stickers in it. I wonder why. <laughs> okay, there was once a friendly ghost by the name of Gus. He lived in an old house in the country with apple trees and lilacs in the yard. Mr. and Mrs. Scott and their twins, Susie and Sammy, lived there too in the summer. <laughs> the old house had an attic and sometimes the Scots heard rattles and clanks in it. That was Gus. The Scots didn't believe in ghosts, so they didn't believe in Gus. Still, when they heard the rattles and clanks, they liked to say to their friends, we've got a ghost. The Scots made Gus feel welcome in the old house, so Gus liked them. He especially liked Mrs. Scott. She was so pretty. There's Gus up there in the attic. He's making noise. He wanted to please them all, so he rattled and clanked in the attic. You know, I guess I made this a theater performance once and I had stickers to tell which actors to say what. Anyway. <clears throat> He wanted to please them all, so he rattled and clanked in the attic the way ghosts are supposed to do. We've got a ghost, said the Scots proudly, though they didn't believe in ghosts. Then autumn came and the Scots family left. No need to rattle and clank now. Gus had nothing to do but sit around. So there he is rattling and clanking and there's the Scots going, we've got a ghost. And now he's lonely because they went away. They must have two homes. How exciting. One day he was so lonely sitting around by himself that he went for a walk and he met a mouse. How are you? said Gus. F -f Freezing, said Mouse with chattering teeth. Oh, my kitty did not like me saying that. You want to say hi to the kids? Come here. No, no. Midge is a tucker. She says all sorts of crabby things. Hmm? You don't want me reading about the mouse? No? Hmm? Say hi to the kids. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Where was I? Freezing, said Mouse, with chattering teeth. Come and spend the winter at my house, cried Gus. Any people there, said Mouse. I do hate people. Not now, said Gus, because the people are away. Mouse scurried about the house. It seemed a good place to spend the winter, but it was chilly. Let's build a fire in the fireplace, said Mouse with chattering teeth. I'll get a match. He scurried to the kitchen, but the Scots had taken all the matches away on account of mice. <laughs> Bother, cried Mouse. Gus had never built a fire. Ghosts never get cold, but he wanted Mouse to be happy in his house, so he said some ghostly words he knew, and a fire began to blaze in the fireplace. Well, said Mouse with delight, let's have a bite. I'll look in the cupboard. He 
He's just making himself a home, isn't he? He scurried to the kitchen, but the Scots had taken all the food away. On account of mice. Bother, cried Miles, cried Mouse. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got really tickled. There we go. Gus had never cooked a meal. Ghosts never get hungry, but he wanted Mouse to be happy. A uh, toasted cheese sandwich, said Gus. There isn't any, began Mouse. Then he saw that Gus was slicing a big piece of cheese. Mouse was delighted. Gus was pleased that he had thought of the cheese. Gus pulled a table up to the hearth. He piled nine pillows in a chair for Mouse. Mouse enjoyed his toasted cheese. How do you think Gus got that cheese? Did he do a ghostly thing again like he did with the fire? Finally, Mouse wiped his whiskers. <clears throat> Which is my room? He said. Take your pick, said Gus. Bed will feel good, said Mouse. He scurried into the front bedroom, but Mrs. Scott had put newspapers all over the bed. On account of mice. <laughs> Mouse made a face. I do hate a newspaper, he said. He scurried into the back bedroom. I'll carry a curl up in a drawer. But Mrs. Scott had put mothballs in the drawer. On account of mice, of course. Mouse made a terrible face. I do hate mothballs, he said. Gus wanted Mouse to be happy in his house. Try the attic, he said. Mouse ducked into a hole in the in the wall that Gus showed him and found his way to the attic. He burrowed into an old mattress and went to sleep in the stuffing. There he is on the newspaper, and there he is. He's not liking the mothballs. And Mitch is still complaining that I'm reading a book about a mouse. Gus washed the dishes. He was delighted to have Mouse in the house for company. When Mouse woke up, he scurried downstairs and said, How do I get out of here? Don't go, cried Gus. Aren't you hungry? Oh. What are we having for dinner, said Mouse. Gus began to be very busy. Mouse liked his three meals a day with nibbles in between. So Gus put on an apron, he got out a cookbook, he looked up all the things a mouse might like to eat, he spilled sugar all over the floor, he got flour all over his face. Do you think it matters if a white ghost gets flour on his face? Do you think you'd be able to see it? I don't know. He burned his fingers. Do ghosts burn their fingers? Hmm. I don't know about that. But he made macaroni and cheese and cheesecake. He whipped up cheese soup and cheese sauces. He baked cheese bread and cheese biscuits. Ooh, that sounds good. Cheese popovers and cheese pie. Mouse never had time to help. He was so busy with various matters. But Gus didn't mind. Mouse grew plump on cheese sauce. At night when it snowed, Mouse read to Gus by the fire. Sometimes they played checkers. Sometimes they popped corn. Firelight flickered on the old window panes and smoke curled up the chimney. No one was near to notice. There's all the goodies he made, cheese stuff, and here they are in the window playing checkers. But at last the snow melted and the sun grew warm. The buds on the apple trees swelled, the lilacs burst into bloom, and one day a car drove into the yard. The Scots were back. When Mouse heard Susie and Sammy running through all the rooms, he ducked into the hole in the wall and rushed to the attic. When he peeked out of the mattress and saw his friend Gus, he cried angrily, I'll scare him away! Why, they're nice, said Gus in surprise. He was glad to see the Scots, especially Mrs. Scott. But Mouse had been so happy in the house with Gus's cooking and everything that he was furious to think the Scots had come and spoiled it. Uh-oh. What do you think's gonna happen? Hmm, look at that mad little mouse. Very angry little mouse. <laughs> Gus couldn't cook with Mrs. Scott in the kitchen, so Mouse scampered down to the parlor when the Scots were playing checkers. He ran back and forth inside the wall. Patter, 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 scare them away. We've got a mouse, said Miss, <laughs> it was Mr. Scott. Let me try that again. We've got a mouse said Mr. Scott, but the Scots weren't scared away. What did you want to do that for, said Gus to Mouse, 
Mouse paid no attention. He scampered into the kitchen. He nibbled a piece of blackberry pie and tracked the juice around. He chewed open a box of marshmallow cookies and he spilled some tapioca. Gosh, that's not very nice of him, is it? What do you think the Scots will do? Hmm. Behave yourself, said Gus. Mouse scampered into the bedroom and chewed a hole in a pillow for good measure, but the Scots weren't scared away. So Mouse scurried up to the attic after the Scots were in bed and stamped about over their heads, making all the noise a mouse could possibly make. Have you ever had a mouse in your house? Mm -hmm. I have, even with cats. It's amazing. Finally, Mr. Scott said, I'll set a mouse trap." The next day, Mouse saw a new thing in the attic and smelled something good. He was so hungry. His nose quivered. He crept closer and closer. Keep away, cried Gus. It's cheese, cried Mouse. It's a trap to catch you, said Gus. He put up a sign that said danger. When Mr. Scott didn't catch a mouse, he set another trap. Then another, Gus kept putting up signs that said, beware. <laughs> Why can't you folks get along, cried Gus. He likes all of them, doesn't he? Because he's so friendly. But the more mouse traps Mr. Scott set, the more mouse scampered about among the danger signs to scare the Scots away. Gus began to be really worried. He didn't want his friends the Scots bothered and he didn't want his friend Mouse hurt. I'd never forgive myself if anything happened, he thought. Oh my. Then one day, Mouse became so determined to scare the Scots out of the house that he popped up on a shelf, bold as brass. When Mrs. Scott reached for the cereal, help, screamed Mrs. Scott running away. <laughs> oh no. Oh, and Mrs. Scott is pretty, isn't she? That was the last straw. When Gus saw Mrs. Scott, who was so pretty, scared out of her wits, all of a sudden he pointed his finger at Mouse and roared, that's enough. Oh, the picture. Mouse was so shocked that he stood stock still and stared. Listen to me, shouted Gus. If you stay in this house, you'll do as I say from now on whispered Mouse. You'll stop scaring Mrs. Scott, roared Gus. Okay, said Mouse meekly. You'll stop nibbling and chewing. You can go out to the garden and eat nests. Well, some kind of seed. Mm. Seeds, shouted Gus. Okay, said Mouse. You'll keep quiet while the folks play checkers. Oh, Gus, Gus is not happy. And he's being all meek, isn't he? I'll walk on tiptoe said Mouse. You'll stop stamping around the attic. I'm the only one allowed to make noise in the attic. I'll be as quiet as a mouse, said Mouse. All right, said Gus, <sighs> with a sigh of relief. Then he saw how meek and scared Mouse looked. It's just till the folks go away, he said kindly. So Mouse tiptoed about the house and ate the wildflower seeds in the garden. The Scot said, that mouse is gone. And Mr. Scott took away the traps. Gus rattled and clanked extra loud in the attic so the Scots could stay. So the Scots could say, that's our ghost. What do you say, Midge? That's our ghost. <laughs> and when the Scots went away for the winter, Gus and Mouse had a celebration with cheese croquettes for dinner. The end. Did you like that? I just love that book. I think it is so much fun. Sorry about the stickers. Ah, so what have you done today? I hope something fun. I vacuumed, that was exciting. And I set up a TV antenna and I skimmed ants out of our little pool and I pet Winnie and Bo the dogs and I sat in my hammock and I talked to my sister on the phone and I messaged my son and that's been my day. <laughs> I hope you have had a lovely day. You know that I love you and I miss you and hugs and kisses.